Hello there, my name's Andy. I'm the Technique Editor for Digital Photo Magazine, and welcome to this Technique of the Month extra video. Now, in the first half of this tutorial, which is available in the August 2016 issue of Digital Photo Magazine, we showed you how to add a tropical beach reflection to this urban shot containing a puddle. Now, in the second half of the tutorial, in this video, we're going to show you how to take this image and transform it into this far warmer and more summery looking shot. So let's close down the finished image and start from where we left off last time, which is this shot on screen right now. So if you want to see how we got this far, simply go to the iTunes store and pick up the August 2016 copy of Digital Photo Magazine, and we'll show you how we created this shot. Now to take it a step further, we're going to do the following. Firstly, let's merge these layers to one layer by hitting Ctrl and E, and now both of those layers have been merged to a single layer called Background. Next, what you need to do is open up your web browser because we're going to go to the following web address www.google.com forward slash Nick Collection. That's right, in this month's Technique of the Month Extra, we're going to show you how to use a Photoshop plugin to take your photos even further. Now, this collection of software originally cost around $500 to buy. The company that created the software was later bought by Google and the price was dropped to $150. And then just earlier this year, the price was reduced to absolutely nothing. That's right, this plugin is now completely free of charge. And even if you don't have a copy of Photoshop, you can still download it and use it as a standalone application, or rather a set of applications, completely free. So once you get to google.com forward slash Nick Collection, click on that download button there and if you're a Mac user, download the installer and then double click it to install the applications. If you're a Windows user, click on Windows and at the bottom of the screen you'll see something that says run or save. If you click the run button, the installer will download and automatically run for you. Simply follow the instructions to make sure the software is installed on your system and then reboot Elements or Photoshop. Once you've reopened them, you'll be ready to use your new plugins. I'm going to cancel that and close this browser window and get started from Elements. Okay, so I've already installed the Nick Collection on this computer, so now all I have to do is go to Filter, and at the bottom I'll see a new option that says Nick Collection, and within that I'm going to select ColorFX Pro 4. That's just one of the many applications inside the Nick Collection. Click that once, and ColorFX Pro 4 will open up. There we go. So on the left hand side of the interface I can see all of my filters. Make sure that you've got the all button ticked so that you can see all of the filters at the same time. And on the right hand side you've got the settings for the currently selected filter. So we're going to add our first filter now and it just so happens that that's the one that is already selected. It's called brilliance slash warmth. So click on that once. Here it is brilliance slash warmth. And that filter has now been applied to our image. We're going to bump the warmth up to 100%, so it's a nice, warm, sunny day outside. And we'll increase the perceptual saturation to 10%, and we'll leave the saturation slider on zero. So now we need to add another filter. If we go and click on another filter, we will accidentally overwrite the filter we've just created, so we don't want to do that. First, we want to hit Add Filter. Now we can select our next filter. So go back to the left side and click on Classical Soft Focus. On its default settings, that's a little bit too bright, isn't it? So let's go to Method and click on that drop-down arrow, and we'll choose Method 2 instead. That's a little bit better. It seems to match the image nicely. We'll leave the diffuse detail at 0, we'll leave the strength at 50%, and the brightness at 0%, and we'll move on to the next filter. So click on Add Filter, and next we'll click on Detail Extractor. Now that's a really interesting effect that's added a lot of detail across the board, but I think I'd like the outside to remain fairly diffused and glowy and uh, rather unclear, but I would like to add some grimy detail to the interior of this sort of urban subway environment. So to do that, I need to remove the effect from this circular area here. And an easy way to do that is with the negative control point here. Next to where it says control points, you've got a plus control point that adds the effect and a negative control point that removes the effect. So click on the one with the minus symbol on it and then click once inside the circle about there and that control point will remove the effect from this area we can move it around just to fine-tune it and I think I need to make it a little bit bigger it's too small at the moment so let's make it about the same size as that circle let's put it somewhere on the floor here that looks nice so now we've got a softer area outside and a bit more detail inside I can show you the effect by clicking on that little tick there so let's turn that off that's what it looked like before and on that's what it looks like now so we've added some real grime and detail to this urban environment I think I'd like to make that outside look even more summery so I'm going to add another filter by clicking on the add filter button and then I'm going to go over to glamour glow let's just scroll down to the G section 
and let's find glamour glow there it is click on that once a glow value of 27 is good a saturation value of minus 29 is good i think i'll bump the warmth up even further to plus 64 percent there we are and i'm going to add a plus control point this time because i want to add that effect to the outside where the sun is so click on the control point with the plus next to it and then click down here on the floor again and then just just make that a little bit bigger so that it fills the hole fills that circle and makes it look nice and glowy outside some of the glow could even be spilling inside so we'll make it a little bit bigger than that hole there we go and if we turn that effect off and on we can see that the outside has become even brighter and even more summery that looks great okay one final filter before we're done then let's click on the add filter button once again and then this time we'll scroll all the way down to skylight filter that's another one of those warming filters and there we go that image is looking really warm now I'm gonna leave the strength on 20% but once again I'll add a control point and I'll click inside that circle so that only the outside looks really really hot and the inside looks just a little bit cooler let's drag that closer to the center there we go so these uh, filters that I've placed over the O have had the effect of sort of highlighting the tree making that nice and visible they've also made the outside look really really warm and if I compare that to the original shot by clicking and holding down that compare button there that's what our original looked like far darker and far cooler and if I release the mouse button I can see our new and improved very very summary shot and that is all thanks to the power of the Nick collection so now we're done with ColorFX Pro 4 we can click on OK to close this plugin and go back to elements and ColorFX Pro 4 will write all of those filters that we just added to a new file and it will create a new layer on top of our background image so that we can go back to our original at any point. It doesn't overwrite your original shot, it creates a whole new layer for you. If the effect is too strong for you, you can simply reduce the opacity slightly, let's say to 50%, and you can slightly tone down those warm colors. So if I make that layer invisible and then visible, you can see the changes we've made. And there you have it. That is just a little of the power of the Google Knit Collection. I really hope you've enjoyed this Technique of the Month extra video. If you apply these techniques to one of your own images and create something you love, be sure to share it with us at facebook.com forward slash digital photo UK. We always love to see your work. Okay, that's all from me for this time. I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye for now.